Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. I'm truly honored and privileged to be here today. Um, I have to also just say that it's the first time I've seen the movie Batu, and um, it really moved me quite a bit, quite deeply, because that, that tour, the 1981 tour, was the defining moment of the struggle against racism in South Africa. <coughs> Yet I am virtually assured, and I'm, I'm fairly confident, that yeah. this tour will not be celebrated in South Africa. And I'm sure that this movie <coughs> will not be seen in South Africa. Because the sports struggle in South Africa, as one academic in South Africa put it, is like an aching wound. It refuses to heal. Because another, um, one of your academics at the University of Otago said, when you speak to people, especially a group of young people, give them the big picture. When we give them the big picture, we were all sold it down. Now let me fill in the details. Um, just go up there. Why is my mouse not working? Well, I just want to sketch a bit. Does this thing work on this story here? Yeah. In 1994, uh, the ANC government took power in South Africa. And South Africa then became celebrated or became the most celebrated Bantu stand in the world. And Nelson Mandela became the most celebrated Bantu stand leader in the world. Uh, he sold his people up, and he's revered and acknowledged in the world as a great leader, a great statesman. I'm, I mean, I've, I've been listening to what John just said here now, about they rattled the cages, and they were they rattled the cages, but they were kept in their, their prison bars and so on. But yet those very people made decisions. While he was in prison, and while Thabo Mbeki was in exile, they made decisions to derail the, the anti-apartheid movement. Next year, interestingly, is the ANC's centenary, 2012. And they call it next year the year of mobilization towards non-racialism. Yet they, their, very, their very betrayal of the non-racial movement in South Africa between 1987 and 1993 ensured that racism became entrenched in South African society. We've got to remember that even the Romans used sport to bamboozle people about what was happening in their society even as the empire was crumbling. Now, I'm not sure how many people here will be familiar with the term CODESA, C-O-D-E-S-A. What the CODESA was, the CODESA was the negotiations that led to the elections in 1994. Around the CODESA, there were many compromises were made. I heard John reference here to your Waitangi Treaty. Now, around the CODESA, table, CODESA stood for the Congress of the Democ Democratic South Africa. Um, who is this thing now? LB Sachs. I'm not sure how many people will remember or know Calvi Sachs, renowned ANC Stonewood, he said, we have achieved a great victory. This is just after the 1994 elections. Calvi Sachs said this. We have achieved a great victory. We have accomplished what the apartheid regime never did. We have deracialized oppression and legalized inequality. Joe Slover, I don't know how many people here will be familiar with Joe Slover, leader of the South African Communist Party, part of the new South African government in 1994, said, we are in office, but not in power. So the masses in South Africa are subject to political rhetoric. Continuously, leftists speak. South Africa has got a unique government. We've got an overtly capitalist uh, party, the ANC, who call themselves the, uh, a disciplined cadre of the left. In bed with COSATU, a trade union movement, and the South African Communist Party. And what they are doing is they are bludgeoning the poor to death in South Africa. Chris Hani, I don't know how many people here will be familiar with Chris Hani, who was slain in 1993. He was killed by a far right wing uh, lunatic. Chris Hani said, in October of 1992, in an 
article in, in beer, beer newspaper, he said, what I fear is that the liberators will emerge as elitists who drive around in Mercedes Benz and use the resources of the country to live in palaces and gather riches. A few months later, he was dead. Today, the ANC uses the face of Chris Hani on all their election posters and they say, let's do it for Chris. Now, I just want to go to another piece here. Is this the one? I don't want to keep it too long. History is very important, people. And history, or the path towards the future, falls flat because of history. Because people disregard history. People dismiss history. And history is important because of dates and times and places. Those things contextualize certain things that have happened in the past. Now, I spoke to you about Cadessa. Today, in South Africa, we have a president with his party, the ANC, who find themselves in an almighty mess that they created themselves. Much of the history of the compromises around modern day South Africa is, is not known to the majority of South Africans. They don't know what was compromised, what was sold at that table. Black and white people. But what the Codessa deal did, it consolidated white privilege in South Africa. And white economic gains on all fronts, especially the big corporations. And what we had was, was that um, a new policy came into being to appease the black masses called BEE. -E. How many of you have heard of BEE? -E? Black Economic Empowerment, which in itself is also a racist system. But anyway, black economic empowerment soon became reserved for those <coughs> who were, were within the, the inner circles of the ANC workings. John has mentioned here, Cyril Ramaphosa, former trade unionist, became a majority stakeholder in McDonald's in South Africa. Tokyo Setuale, who is now a national minister of human settlements. Interestingly, just a side note, when, when John came to South Africa in 2009, he slept in a, an informal settlement in Symphony Way, mm -hmm. yeah. out in the street with the people, just as a, a show of solidarity with the people and identifying with their struggle. The ANC, shortly, I don't know if he was still in South Africa, but they said that what this guy is doing, this winter chap is doing, he's trying to uh, score cheap points. Because he doesn't know what it's like in the township. He is now just being a, 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 a media hog. But shortly before the election, our very own Tokyo Setuale, Minister of Human Settlements, also moved into a shack. And loved it. But I believe he didn't last for three hours. And then the security people had to come and fetch him. <laughs> okay? Today, the, uh, Tokyo, the majority of South Africans saw Tokyo for the first time when uh, Krasani was killed. So he was at the, standing next to Krasani's body. That's the first time I saw him. The majority of South Africans saw him. He is one of South Africa's wealthiest men. He featured in a television show called The Apprentice, which was one of on the Donald Trump story, and the key words being, you're fired. <laughs> this is coming from a former trade unionist. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens is that because of this, these uh, constraints that the ANC government finds themselves in, they, they chose those chains, and how they find themselves in this mess. And Black South Africans, the majority of South Africans, are becoming faceless. Uh, 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 and our, our social unrest in South Africa is on the increase. We have more unrest in South Africa than China. And China's got a massive population. So it takes some to very unhappy people in South Africa. But because of this, it becomes 